Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, I don't know where you are, but oh my goodness, Guelph is covered in ice pellets and snow and it's April 15th and Mother Nature doesn't seem to know it. I don't know what's up with that, but anyways, um, hopefully you are warm and toasting your homes and you've got a cup of coffee or tea or wine or whatever your, your um, beverage of choice is. Um, as you sit with us to uh, take in this webinar. So before I get started in introducing myself and the guests and uh, our topic, I'm just going to take you through a couple of logistics. So please make sure that your audio, your computer audio is turned up and unmuted. If you can hear my voice, then you are doing well. Um, if at any time the webinar presentation freezes, you can just refresh your browser or press F5 and it should come back back up. Uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded. Um, there are two places that I want to just draw your attention to on the screen in front of you. One is the left, oh sorry, no, the right hand pane which says Skype Q&A. Um, that is our Skype Q&A thing. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put in a little message there. Uh, hang on a second. I can't type and talk at the same time. So you should have just seen something that says welcome everyone, that's me. Uh, basically this is the place where you can put in um, your your questions and I do hope that you have some questions for us tonight. Um, why don't we get started and just as I'm kind of doing this intro, why don't we have um, everyone just type in where they're from. Uh, and um, so your name, if you want to give us your name and uh, where you're from, that would be great. And I, instead of last, the last webinar, um, Heather and I were busy kind of typing in answers to everyone. We're not going to do it quite that way this time because, again, it's hard to talk and type at the same time. Um, so this time, um, put in your, uh, where you're from and then just, um, um, We'll just broadcast those. So if you don't want people to know who you are, then just please um, put your message in anonymously. You can do that. You can choose to put your name in or not. And um, and hang on one second. We're having a bit of uh, some issues here. Our speakers having some issues. Um, okay. Okay, so if everything's good there, if sorry, our speaker is just having some issues with uh, hearing us, but I think everything is good now. Um, if not, Heather, if you can just tell Elaine to go okay. out and go back in. Oh, good. Okay, Elaine, you're good. You're there. Okay, so um, so if you're listening to us, just type in your, your name and where you're from. That'd be great. We'd love to uh, know that you're on there. We can't actually see who's connected with the way this technology works. So that just lets us know that you're you're on the line. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is at the top of your screen, there is this little link called survey, and that is a link to our feedback survey. And um, before you leave the webinar today, we would appreciate if you just clicked on that survey link and filled out. It takes about three minutes. It's a really quick survey. And if you filled it out other, other months, um, please just take a few minutes and fill it out again. It really helps us. And uh, we appreciate that. Okay. Without further ado, um, we are here tonight talking about traveling with kids. And uh, my name is Ruth Morton. I am on the board of Multiverse Canada. Um, I'm the director of IT and the vice chair. And I am mom to Noah and Daniel, who are both age nine. And Heather is with me. Heather, my co-host, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Heather. Uh, I am the chair of the board of directors at this time, and I have four children. Um, Maggie is 22, Katie is 18, and uh, Matt and Cassie are 15. Great, great. And we have Elaine on the line with us. And, and before I let Elaine speak, I'm actually going to um, do a bit of an introduction for her. I've known Elaine for years and years and years. Actually, Elaine is the group of friends I met my husband through way back when. Um, she is mom to four boys and her youngest is just a couple of, what, two weeks, two weeks older than my boys. Is that right, Elaine? Yeah. 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 
So, um, and we knew each other back when we were, um, we were both in the world of technology. We worked at the same technology company when we were first starting out our careers, but then she decided to leave that. Um, and she was a stay at home mom uh, for a number of years. But then once she was pregnant with Peter, her youngest, she decided to uh, work at home as a travel agent. And so since then, she has been uh, actually helping me <laughs> organize our travel as a family and she helps all sorts of families and so I thought she'd be a great speaker and I'm thrilled to have her on today because she does come have a large family and she does help a lot of people with um with their travel and so Elaine um welcome thanks for joining us tonight thank you so much for inviting me I'm so happy to be part of this and uh, excited for my first webinar kind of experience as well to be honest <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Hopefully it won't be too painful. <laughs> no, no. Good. Um, okay, so um, let's see. Oh, yeah, here we are. I have our outline here with us. So let's start out with um, just talking about some of the disasters that we've had. So we'll warm up everything. And, and everyone, as we're talking, if you have any questions, anything specific you want to ask, just type it in the Q&A window there. Um, so who wants to start off with like the worst travel experience you've had, you know, especially with your family or your kids? Well, I sat down with my kids the other day, well, just next to the two middle girls, and I said, so what do you think, what were some of the funny, bad things that happened when we travel? And almost all of them involved their other two siblings throwing up. <laughs> so we went through a long period of time with both of them um with with car sickness so i thought i would share our best car sickness tips to come out of this which were we always travel with ziploc bags and we prepped the ziploc bags with lines with lining of paper towel and they <laughs> sit behind their seat so two things one if they you know give it back they can <laughs> quickly open the bag give it back in the bag it's covered so not everybody else has to see it and then it's closed so that everybody else has to smell it and it makes oh, it a lot easier boy. to throw it out. Because we found that with four kids in the car, one goes, then the other goes, and mom's in the front seat heaving. So we yeah. had to come up with a really good solution. And the, the Ziploc bag with the paper towels was our good solution. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that uh, makes you remember when uh, not my own kids. I, I'm so glad my kids are not. They'll get sick a lot because I'm not good with with stuff like that at all the whole oh. pooping and the vomit and the stuff oh my goodness I don't know why I had kids because that's all they're about but I do remember um going to a cabin with my my sisters and we must have I think we drank um bad milk or something and we were all sleeping in the loft bedrooms you know you can imagine a cottage when you have to go up the stairs and there's the beds up there and I just remember my dad basically running from one bed to the next so each of us could throw up in this one bucket he had and then running down the stairs to clean it out and then running back upstairs and going from one bed to the next so we all throw up and I think at one point he fell up the stairs or something I just remember he had bruises all over <laughs> the next morning um thinking this is only one night but I yeah that was ugh. I'm so glad knock on wood so far my kids have spared me of that well if it's any consolation it we need to get better i don't have the car sickness nearly as much everybody's learned where their best place is to sit in the car because yeah. you know everybody has the places that they can sit and uh, uh we do the drive from windsor to ottawa so it is a long time in the car so um to yeah. visit family so that's how we've sort of gotten to figure that out and are you, you oh sorry go ahead Elaine. oh no i was gonna say it's funny that you guys all talk about puke because my best two disaster stories were about puke as well <laughs> oh do tell do tell oh um it's just that my kids i mean you know you might not eat anything bad but you could be air sick or seasick right and mm -hmm. and uh our second best story was my kids being seasick on the disney cruise and he came to our room and said mom i don't feel so good and proceeded to puke all over the floor oh, at about no. four in the morning and then my husband and i having a big argument as in now do we call the room steward now to help us clean all this stuff up but it's four in the morning how about the kids sleeping like <laughs> and then we decided well we'll just sleep with the puke around us till tomorrow morning <laughs> 
Oh, oh, fun. But the, oh. the moral of that story is always be kind and tip generously to the people who serve and help you because that is a thankless, thankless job. And the guy did an awesome job <laughs> cleaning up after us. Um, you know, he, he was so kind, not judgmental at all. <laughs> I would and, agree. Like the whole the whole tipping and treating treating people well when you're traveling, especially with a whole horde of kids. Um, is really important. Exactly. Yeah. You get much better service and you don't feel quite as bad about leaving the whole mess under the table after dinner. You know? <laughs> well, you take a mom of four anywhere and she's probably cleaned up, stacked all the dishes, made the beds, taken off the sheets before she left, and yeah. you know, made sure all the garbage is in the corner. That's just, that's what happens when we travel, so. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. So, um, so Elaine, you have helped many, many families with their travel arrangements. What are some of the things that parents worry about when they're starting to plan a vacation with kids and what kinds of things should, um, should, should the parents that are listening to us consider and think about? Um, in terms of just like a general vacation, I guess, like just not just like a regular, I'm going away for a two day weekend kind of thing, right? Like you're talking about like yeah. a regular vacation. Yeah, like, let's say we're going away for a week. Um, how? Well, first of all, you know, I'm sure that um, you know some of our, some of the people listening that have smaller kids are going, "Oh, how do I do this?" Yeah, like the first question is always, you know, uh, my kids are really little. I'm looking for a place that would have the amenities or the programs um, to, you know, keep my children entertained. Um, my husband and I haven't had a chance to go away for like years. You know we want to make sure our kids are safe and there's stuff for them to do and that maybe my husband and I can, you know, sneak out or, or do something for adults, just the two of us, um, while the kids are occupied. Those usually are the first sentence starters that, you know, when they call me and they, they ask their questions. And then the next concerns would be, you know, cost. Mm. Um, and then, you know, how safe is this place? Um, my kids may have allergies. Um, well, how do they deal with that? Um, I heard it in the news, so and so place seems to be in the news for not being safe. What do you think? So I would say, you know, maybe it's their first vacation away and stuff that they want to make sure their um, their kids are happy with, that the adults are happy too, and then cost, and then pretty much, you know, if there's any allergies, and then lastly, you know, security and safety concerns, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, um one of the things that that really struck home so i took we took a um a, a driving trip out to you no know, actually we flew to calgary and then we drove across the rockies to vancouver and then we took a train down to seattle and then we flew home this was a couple of summers ago and um the one thing that occurred to me as we were going from hotel to hotel <laughs> was the hotel especially this one that we really enjoyed was get a balcony you know because our kids were small enough that we we couldn't leave them in the hotel by themselves and there wasn't any like you know we were staying at at um i don't know a lot of cheap places as we, as we went through and um but the places that we enjoyed the most were the ones where we could put the kids, kids to bed and then we could just sit out on the balcony with a book and with each other and maybe, maybe with a beer and a glass of wine and just chat and not have to be huddled quietly under the, you know in the hotel room with them but we were right there uh, balconies rock well i i find i look for things like that too when we took the kids the four kids to disney we did uh, the disney cabins and that gave us that just the ability to step outside if you know someone was driving you crazy or to sit outside on the porch or to go for a run or or whatever. So I, I do find I look for those, not always alternate accommodations, but the things that are going to give us a little bit more space because we're always traveling with so many people. Yeah. The, the, the interesting thing is I just dealt with a family um, today, actually, and, and it just reminded me, sometimes um, husbands and wives have very different priorities of what the vacation should look like. <laughs> right, and it's nice that you, you, you know, us ladies, we're all probably thinking the same thing. Oh, we want to spend time with each other. Once the kids go to bed, we can go on the balcony and go outside. And then the husbands come in and like, no, I, my bottom line is cost. So I don't want a room with a balcony. I, I, don't want, I just want cheap, cheap, cheap. 
<laughs> and then, you know, so very often I have to get the parents back together and say, I think you guys need to prioritize what is important. What are you looking at for in this vacation and come to an agreement? Because, you know, to go with the balcony is more expensive than, you know, to go with a, a room with no windows on a cruise ship, for example. Yeah, cruise, that's especially a thing. And, and actually, to be honest, the, you know, everyone has their preferences mm -hmm. on the cruise ship. I don't know, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on our, on our balcony the one time we had it on the cruise ship, and I, I thought I, I thought we would. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you don't know until you, <laughs> until you try it or you talk to people or... Or it could be the ages of your kids. I think if you had babies and they all go to bed at, you know, nine, eight, nine o'clock, and you're like, now that you, you're like, oh, great, we have to go to bed at eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't even watch TV because you know it's going to wake them up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So you know what I did actually the last time we all went and I knew that we were going to be in a room because actually my husband snores like horribly um, and so so and you know we're in close quarters and everything and I don't know ever since I've had the kids I've slept started sleeping really light so I actually downloaded a whole bunch of movies to um, an external hard drive that I could just um, connect to my phone. <laughs> And with my headset and my phones, I could watch a movie in bed with nobody, you know, nobody listening. And I down made sure I downloaded an, uh, a book off at audible.com and I downloaded some music. <laughs> so my phone was my my lifesaver. And I would uh, I have a set of uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones that you can go, you know, jogging with and stuff. And I used those. so I wasn't tied to my phone, literally. Um, and that helped a lot sleeping with everybody in one room. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, I'm not good with that. <laughs> <laughs> some people are. Um, so I know some of the things that we also talked about when we were um, prepping for this this webinar is uh, about some of the challenges that large families have. Um, can you talk a bit about that, about what you found? So um, I'm assuming you're talking about me. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, but actually both you, both you and Heather have large families, but I'm sure you've dealt with um, a lot of large families as well. Yeah, I think uh, the, the most pressing issue is, you know, how do I fit six people in one room? And chances are you can't unless you're willing to spend a lot of money for a suite. Um, and I, I tend to be um, very budget conscious. And so I, I just have I just always try to find, you know, if how much is it how much does it cost a room? either on a cruise or an all-inclusive resort or even a hotel room for six people. And it's usually, I'm forced then to take a very expensive suite. And then I try to compare that against maybe um, two interconnecting uh, very cheap rooms or two rooms that are side by side that are very, very cheap. Um, because sometimes it's, it's um, almost the same or even cheaper to take the two cheap rooms and it gives you an additional bathroom. Oh, oh yeah. Um, for my family of six, an additional bathroom is quite important, um, especially if, let's say, you're on a cruise and someone's using the toilet in one, and really, and somebody else really needs to go. You have to send that person to a different deck <laughs> to find an additional <laughs> to find another bathroom. <laughs> so oh, having yeah. two, two bathrooms is, is is very helpful. Yeah. We actually found um, a hotel in Ottawa this the last trip um, that we did, and it was obviously converted apartment building, and we had a room with two single beds, and that was the sweetest thing we had ever run across because <laughs> when you have the big age range that we do and boy girl twins, yeah, nobody wants to sleep together, nobody, yeah. and so we were able to have the two single beds for actually my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter. And then the other two slept in uh, the pullouts throughout the trip. But man, did that that single bed thing make a big difference? Absolutely, yeah. and and especially too. Um, and I'll just speak more about all inclusive resorts and cruises. Like if you go to an all inclusive resort, you're looking at usually two double beds in one room. Yeah. And even if it was a family of four, right? right. When Noah and Daniel get a little older and say they're two teenagers, it's tight to fit two teens into a double bed. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And on a, on a cruise ship, you'd be, you know, two beds put together, a bed for a, ni a nice bed for Ruth and John, but then 
the other bed could be a double sofa bed. And so if you have mixed gender kids, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a lot harder if they're teens, right, to share as well. And yep. you're stuck on a double sofa. So stuff, questions that you have to ask as well, like how, what is, what does the bedding look like in the room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have a couple of questions that have come in. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, we've got uh, from Mike, who is wondering how parents of triplets deal with the one lap infant per adult policies on planes, trains, etc. cetera, um, as it's a main obstacle for them. Um, so what what do you know about that? Elaine, do you have you uh, looked yeah, into Yeah, I did look into for flights. Um, and unfortunately, it's a Transport Canada requirement. Anyone that's under the age of two, it has to be one adult, one infant. Even if you did buy a seat, um, you know, regardless, you have to have one adult and one infant. It's not an airline uh, requirement. It's a Transport Canada rule. And that idea behind it is that um, a child of two is helpless, right? Like if, if you are busy helping with one child, who's, who's helping the other kid put on their oxygen mask or their life jacket? Or if you are in the crash position, um, a mom can't hold two kids safely and assume the position um, if the plane is, has, it has to make an emergency landing. So unfortunately for flights were out of luck, it has to be one adult and one child under two. So I guess... Now, and I was just going to say, I just remembered something, Elaine, that um, my daughter traveled alone. She's uh, 15. She traveled alone last summer to mm -hmm. Nanaimo. And she didn't have to fly on a company minor because of her age. She was, I think it was under 12, you would have had to. Yeah. But they, they did offer me the option of flying with her. And is and there was a really sweet um, deal that if I flew with her to her location and didn't stay, but got right back on the next flight coming back, mm -hmm. that, the fl that the cost of my flight to do that was extremely, extremely much lower. So then maybe a family with triplets could take somebody just for the flight or the train and then be able to send them back. <laughs> yeah. wouldn't, you have to, wouldn't you have to do that all over again? You'd have to do that twice, wouldn't you? Yeah, you have to do that twice, yeah. Yeah, unless, and like, unless you were seeing family or something that wanted to come back with you or something. Uh, but I, yeah. I know no. it was an option that they offered me. Hmm. Yeah, um, I have not seen so. that, and I think primarily exactly what you were saying, Ruth, like, okay, so then the person comes back, but then now you have the same problem on yeah. your return trip. Yeah, um, I think um, I often thought, you know, I, I didn't end up flying with the, the boys when they were young, although I would have loved to. I mean, I I like to travel. My husband travels if he has to, um, but I think if I, if I if I had wanted to go have gone somewhere, if I could have gotten the energy to go somewhere <laughs> uh, when my husband didn't want to go, I probably would have um, asked my sister to come with me or um, yeah, probably my sister or my mom or somebody, you know. Yeah. And, I've, I've had lots of friends who would ask like they're um, someone from church or their nephew or their niece that are oh, yeah. you know, like a, a young teen, right? Yeah. Um, who would then get a free trip out of this. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. and you have the extra set of hands, and and especially if like you need to go to the bathroom, and you don't have to schlep everyone in the bathroom with you. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> with all three babies, like having the bathroom and taking them all with you? Oh uh, boy, I, I can't in the airport, either. right? Like I, I was just thinking, you know, if I had to take all of my kids into the app, um, bathroom, it's it's quite a lot. I mean, I I flew to Malaysia um, with my three kids. Um, and they were three, five, six at the time. And Malaysia is about 20 hour flight plus. Oh, boy. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I had the bright idea that I was going to bring my uncle and aunt to come with me. Because <laughs> they're older than me. They had to have their kids. They would be very helpful. But I didn't realize they might be tired from the long flight and would be asleep most of the flight. <laughs> so really, they were of no help to me. <laughs> Like to go to the bathroom with three young ones. I mean, I brought a stroller with me, but it was literally everybody had to come in the bathroom, and I'm pushing this big. At that time, I brought the, I had the double umbrella stroller with me, and I pushed it in there, and everybody hang on to the stroller. Nobody move while I'm in the toilet with the door partially open. <laughs> you know, are you still there? Yes. And 
And I said, I just need someone who's who reliable, <laughs> who wouldn't fall asleep on me. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I remember, I remember thinking actually, the other person was we had a nanny for the first two years, and um, that would, and also had a mother's helper that sometimes helped on the weekends, and um, yeah, they, they would have jumped at the chance, I'm sure, uh, to have gone on a trip. Then again, you do have that extra cost, but that. That's part of having a family, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another question we have from um, from Mary Marie Eve. Um, she's interested in the possible logistics. What do you do when your kids go to bed at six thirty, <laughs> and you're in an all inclusive and have to go for dinner? Are there resorts, uh, Caribbean particularly, that cater to this? What do you know, Elaine? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Six thirty. Uh, yeah, it's a little early. <laughs> Uh, I do know um, that I think beaches, I mean, beaches would have kids programs that your kids could go to while you go for dinner. I do know of a resort in Jamaica um, that they provide nannies. Oh, nice. You can hire nannies um, and they're your nanny for the week. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah. So, I mean, there's pros and cons. I think that resort is a little older um, that provides the nanny. Um, so it's a little smaller. So the beach and the resort amenities outside of the nanny may not be, as, may not have all the bells and whistles that you might be looking for in all inclusive. But um, definitely, if you want the extra set of hands, this, this would be a good option. I always tell families, I said, you know, going back to my earlier story, uh, talking to your husband or wife, like, you know, discuss what your priorities are and what you're willing to spend money on. And um, ultimately, you know, we travel arrangements can be made and I'm sure we can find some options to present to you, but we, everybody has to be on the same page as what's important. And if having a nanny is important to you, but you know, cost, you, you want to balance out with cost, this resort might be a good option, but know that we, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like the water slides and the uh, kayaking and the extra classes that you might be looking at, at yeah. like with other resorts. And uh, you know, I found too when the boys were little because I, um, I remember, I remember the first time we did it. We actually did Disney cruise, and Elaine, I don't know if you remember this, but all I remember is that I had no, I couldn't organize my way out of a paper bag. The boys were small. I think there were three when we actually went and we started booking this about a year and a half in advance. And I remember just saying to Elaine, just just give me my options and then tell me what I should do, you know. But I remember during that trip, um, the boys were going to bed uh, pretty early and I think they they had dropped a nap. And then during the vacation, we put it back in so that they would have a nap in the afternoon so that we, they could then stay up later. Um, and the vacation wasn't about, because my husband was very, um, uh, he didn't think this was going to go well at all. And actually, before we left, he actually booked our second Disney cruise before we left the boat. He was so impressed because it wasn't about us being away from our kids, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. The boys stuck with us like glue through the whole thing. They didn't want to do any of the programs or anything, which, but then, but the thing is, we didn't have to cook the meals. We didn't have to clean up after ourselves. We didn't have to make you know beds or or deal with any stuff, and so it actually was a vacation. And we just we had the kids with us all the time, and basically we napped when they napped. And, and I think there was one time, um, was that the time? I remember we did have somebody. Well, maybe I think it was somebody that was on the cruise with us um, stayed in our in our room one night so that John and I could go out for a drink, um, stuff like that. We just kind of. You just kind of do it. <laughs> it's always nice to travel with a lot of friends. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, we, Ruth and I, we just came back from a cruise in August and we had about 40 people, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was just, crazy. You know, we definitely had enough friends to babysit any young ones that <laughs> needed babysitting and also uh, kids who are older who could babysit. And I remember when our family went on a cruise with my in-laws, I mean, we pretty much had a, uh, all the kids in two interconnecting rooms. The younger kids went to bed, the older teens were in the other room, and we brought walkie-talkies and we ordered them room service, and then the parents <laughs> went out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, Mary, Mary Eve is asking how safe the Disney cruise ships are. Our, our kids are two and climb everything, uh, everywhere. I guess I'm worried they'll fall overboard. Um, so I, yeah, we took the kids, our kids when they were three. And um, I mean, you still have to be with them, you know, kind of, but um, the, the boats are really big. And um, I, I'm trying to think what the uh, what the railings were like. So I could answer that. Like okay. most most cru most cruise lines, um, but specifically Disney, they have plexiglass um, oh, right. uh, plexiglass um, balconies. Is what I'm trying to get at. So what happens is most kids they tend to try to climb because they can't see. So when you have balconies that have the half white wall or railings, it blocks the kids' view. And so if you if, if you were in your own room and you are on your veranda, they would kind of like to, and it's easy for them to climb up, right? And okay. so they want to see over, and that's when most uh, dangers happen. If you were to book a veranda room, first of all, your room would have a, a, a floor to ceiling um, sort of sliding doors, so if you could close those sliding doors and your your kids can still look out and not be interested in to actually going on to the veranda. And then if you open up those sliding doors and you're on the veranda, again, it's plexiglass veranda, they can see out and really have no interest to climb on. Uh, but from a practical standpoint, I'm, I'm usually with the kids if I'm on the veranda. I don't usually try to push the chair or the table close to the veranda for them to climb on. <laughs> um, and if you all all else fails, don't book a veranda room. Book an inside room with no windows, or book an ocean view room which only has windows that you can see out of. We and, did um, we did the the portal one in Disney. Yeah. They have these big portals, and it was big enough for me to actually sit in and read my book. Um, and it was fantastic because it's just this big round big window there that nobody can open or close, and you can see the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I was never afraid that the boys were going to fall out. Sorry, I interrupted you there. Go ahead. No, no, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk about some of the advantages of traveling with a big family. Um, so family passes, group rates, baby swaps. Um, tell us about those. How do you find them? How do you uh, how do you find the good things? So I, I, your, your, sorry, your question is the advantage of traveling with a, a big group. Yeah, what, well, or, yeah, um, basically, how do you take advantage of having a big family? Um, there's, there's things that make it harder, like having to get two rooms and things like that. Yeah. But, like, um, for our family, we found that there were family passes that if we got a family pass rather than we all paid, um, it was a little bit cheaper um, sometimes. And sometimes we even qualify for a group rate if we happen to have a couple extra people with us. Um, which was nice. So, it, I mean, it's, it helps you just, you know, use the system and try to save a little bit of money when you're traveling. In and terms of, yeah, in terms of um, that, like, I, I, I find with large group of families, like, people are aware things are more difficult for you. So, even if you were to tell the resort or to tell the cruise line, like, we're a large group, I mean, you know, whatever you can do, uh, can you help us in terms of location of your room? You know, they're actually very willing to help any family, but specifically larger families as well. How many times have you played, or actually this is directed towards Heather, how many times have you uh, played the, the whole twin uh, card? Oh, I've got twins. Can you help me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know that we do that card as much, but, you know, I'm always trying to get a deal. Like, well, even just I find with hotels now, trying to guarantee that the two rooms would be side by side is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. um, they won't do that, um, but, you know, we, we would book a suite and, you know, or we'd book a room that they would take five in and sneak the other one in the back door, right? So, um, especially when they were little, it was like ridiculous. What am I going to do? Put the twins in one room and everybody else in the other? And yeah, so, but one of the cool things about, it doesn't have to be a big family, but when we were at Disney back when we only had the two kids, um, <clears throat> they did a thing that was called Baby Swap that um, one person would wait in line with say the toddler and so dad's waiting in line with the toddler you ride the ride and mom and the baby wait at the exit and then dad takes the baby and mom and the toddler go back on the ride so that the adults don't have to wait twice in line 
And um, so that was a nice thing when we went with only the two kids. Oh, that's good. Do they still do that, Elaine? Yes, absolutely. Yes, they do for sure. Yeah. That's good. I remember we tried to do one, uh, was it with babies? But it was, oh, it was when you're, oh, it was, it was when you have a one person with a kid and then another adult with a kid on another ride and then the, you can get pa fast passes for the, the, the other parent and kid that aren't there. I, how does that work again? I'm totally messing up what that is. I just remember we tried, we, uh, we used it once. I think the fast passes have, in spe specifically for Disney, the fast passes have changed a lot now. Like you can uh, book a lot of your fast passes before you can even um, get to uh, Disney. So, and I remember being able to link up to other families. So it will be my family of six plus, my brother's family of six, and we're able to choose a time that we can um, take a ride together, for example. Yeah. So not specifically for large families, but for Disney, they, they do try to accommodate that. Most families want to plan their stuff in advance and they want to avoid lines. And this is their way of trying to help. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, specifically about when you're traveling, when your kids are small, especially if you've had two or three babies. Um, there's, as we've been talking, there's a couple of things that have kind of popped to my head that I remember um, from that time, because that's, I think, um, really important. That's where it's the most stressful. <laughs> you know, to be honest, when my kids are nine years old now, um, it's not as stressful uh, traveling with them. But I, I do think that um, I had an advantage in that both my babies like to sleep in the car. Um, and actually, my nine-year-old boys will actually willingly sleep in the car because I tell them they know now, they understand that the car ride will go faster if they are asleep for most of it. And in fact, even when we go to Toronto, they're like, how long is the ride going to be? And we're like, an hour. And they're like, but I said, you know, but if you close your eyes, then A, it'll go faster, and B, you can stay up later. And they're like, oh, okay. And they just fall right to sleep. Um, but... Um, yeah, you know, and I think, you know, to, to Mike's point, if you try and get on a, a flight with babies and you don't have enough adults, you, you can't. But, you know, another alternative is to, to drive. Um, what do you remember, Heather, from traveling with the babies? Well, driving was really the only thing we did. Um, we were not um, brave enough, nor with four young kids under seven, financially stable enough to be making um, grand trips. Um, so we would, uh, you know, schlep up to Ottawa. Um, I think one of the keys I think I would look at um, in retrospect is you probably don't need to take as many things as you think you need to take. Um, like we would take four kids, and I swear we would need three roof racks you know, we would have no room for anything. Um, but, uh, you know, we stopped a lot. We packed um, lunches a lot so that we could stop at the side of the road so that the older kids could do a run, not just get out of the car and sit in a restaurant because you've got to be good sort of in both of those places. So, I mean, we were traveling on a budget, but we also would travel with the idea that, that there was a time to get out and move around. Um, but I think the other thing is, to be as confident as you can um, and not think you can't do it is one of the, the big things we, yeah. you know, we try to teach with our prenatal class and, and practice getting out, practice, you know, going out to a park, practice, you know, packing a bag and going for one night. And I mean, Mike can wanting to take triplets on a plane. Mike's a brave man. <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't find the relaxation in that vacation at all and um I, I think that's a great thing to tr to want to try and do i hope that they can work it out but um for me i just wanted to like you said get away not cook and not do dishes and not make beds like that's yeah. that's a vacation for me so cottages and, and cabins we did that a couple of times um and you don't have to go far from home it's just different yeah uh, just being somewhere different so yeah yeah, I would say that um, being prepared to travel slower, like mm -hmm. you're not going from A to B, it has to be, you go from A to a park, to a, a other place to stop, to a whatever, you know, and then you finally get to your destination. 
but it has to be, you have to kind of go on. The other thing, it's funny you say cottage. I still remember the one time we took the boys up to my aunt's cottage. And it's about a four and a half hour drive away. And uh, it was for Thanksgiving weekend. And we drove there very slowly. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, we got there and we had a great time with family. But of course, it wasn't, my aunt and uncle are older. And so the cottage was not baby proof. So we were kind of on guard the whole time we were there. And then my dad said to me, he goes, well, this was on the Sunday. He's like, it was Saturday. And he said, well, we were thinking that tomorrow, because we were the only ones staying at the cottage and then everyone else was kind of coming into the cottage. Um, he said, well, we were thinking tomorrow, we would just let you guys like hang out here by yourselves, like give you a bit of a vacation. And I looked at him, I said, that it's not a vacation because we need the extra pair of hands. So if you guys aren't here coming tomorrow, we are leaving. <laughs> and it was a totally different mindset. He's like, oh, well, we'll come then. We'll help you. We'll, we'll visit some more. I'm like, okay, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, you cannot expect to travel somewhere in the same time frame as you did when you were single. No. I remember my husband saying, it takes seven hours to get to Ottawa. Why is it taking us 12? Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> because got six kids. kids to pee and two of them had to throw up and this one's now hungry and yeah 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 Plus, Plus, breastfeeding you'd have to stop to breastfeed as well and that oh, takes uh, i still remember elaine i still i don't even think i told you this i remember one time you telling me before i had this is before i had the babies how it took you a long time because you had to stop to breastfeed and i was all confused i'm like why couldn't you just breastfeed <laughs> as you're going you know <laughs> i have no idea of course yeah 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 of course yeah. <laughs> you have to unbuckle the baby um now our parents wouldn't have no no and of course me not yeah not having yeah. a clue what i was doing before i had kids still don't have a clue what i'm doing but anyways <laughs> so for my family i say we we've always traveled on a budget i mean partly because i have a, a jewish and scottish heritage no no problem admitting that uh, and also with four kids. So um, there's a few tips I thought I would throw along. One, um, when we went to Disney, we hit the Disney store online or the Disney store before and bought souvenirs. We packed them, we hid them and packed them in the bags. And then when the kids asked for things when we were there, we took them out and said, oh, we got this for you. <laughs> and it was like a third of the cost as to buying it on on the site. And so, and we knew that they would like it. and. Um, we travel non-prime time um, because of crowds and finances and all of that. So one of our favorite weeks to go um, to the parks in Florida is the week after New Year's. After New Year's. Hmm. And um, the nice thing about that week is that the Christmas things were still up, but halfway through the week they come down. So at the beginning of the week we got to see the Christmas parades and the Christmas decorations. And by the end of the week, we got to see the regular parades. <laughs> and so things had come down. So it was it was really interesting um, that time that we went. So it, it made a difference. It also hit a free dining week because it is a low thing. So we didn't have to worry about food for the most part, um, which was you know one of the biggest things of is you know figuring out where everybody's going to eat and how much it's going to cost once you're there. And yeah, so that worked out really well for us. What was the temperature like? at that time of year we were really lucky the year we were there we were in shorts it only rained one day um so probably 75 uh, whatever that is in canadian i live on the border um <laughs> so like 24 something like that yeah so it was nice and we when we knew that right so we went yeah. prepared we weren't going to go sit on a beach somewhere we knew that that wasn't our thing and we got up in the morning we had yeah. seven year olds uh, 10 year olds and 14 year old and we got up we left we parked all day came back between 12 and 15 hours later they slept we got up we did it again <laughs> so, yeah they got their money's worth out of it that's for sure yeah and you you were saying going no not uh, in um non-prime time i know with the cruises we've always booked a year and a half in advance yeah. and so you get the best rate and then the the nice thing actually with um with flights and cruises, I mean, well, in cruises, you book a year and a half in advance, and that's because that's when the prices are first released. And with cruises, um, usually it's a refundable deposit. So if you decide to cancel at some point, you get your deposit back. Um, if prices drop before you travel, 
um, the cruise lines are happy to reprice you down. So really, there's no disadvantage to booking early. Same thing with Disney World as well. You can book it about a year in advance. And really, it's only um, a $200 deposit per room. Um, and again, refundable. And if new promotions come up, all of a sudden there's a free dining promotion that comes up because they decided to throw it in. You can definitely get it repriced and take advantage of that. Um, flight pricings, um, unfortunately, flights you have to pay in advance in full. But usually it comes up about a year. Three, it's about 330 days in advance you can start booking your flights. And really that's when the cheapest time is. Uh, of flights are because they usually try to sell you lower price tickets first and as you get closer to departure date the more expensive tickets are left and mm -hmm. even though when they say it's a seat sale or promotion it's actually just a sale on that current price so in the 10 years that I bought flights I've only really lost money once by booking so far in advance um, and that was because um, Air Canada introduced Air Canada Rouge and so it was different flight pricing then. But other than that, I've been pretty much lucky if you booked early and you booked your, your and paid for your tickets for flights in advance. Yeah, that's good. Another, um, another good thing for, um, uh, for keeping costs low is groceries. So mm -hmm. we did this last time we went to um, down to Florida, instead of staying on the resort where we just had a, a hotel room, we actually booked a condo and we were traveling with my in-laws so it was nice because everyone we, my in-laws had their own room they had the master suite with the you know their own bathroom then john and i had our own room and then the boys had their own room and they had those you know two single beds which they loved they're like oh good i don't have to sleep with my brother um and then we got a full kitchen like it was great and it cost us um less than obviously less than if we were on 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 the property and we just went to the grocery store and so our um, our breakfast and snacks were all through the grocery store and then we had lunch at the thing and then sometimes we had dinner sometimes we didn't it just depended on what was what was going on but you kind of um, are able to cut down costs with the groceries but unfortunately bringing food across the border is uh, not easy so it all depends on what it is there's very few restrictions now living right on the border um, okay. We traveled to a cottage just about three years ago, and it used to be no meat, no it, citrus is probably one of the bigger ones. But I could pick a lasagna now that I made at home. I think as long as it wasn't goat. <laughs> goat okay. Was the, yeah. So the, I I recommend that is one thing I would say when you travel across the border, call and ask every time. Those rules can change, um, you know, on a whim. It seems they they update those kind of things. And we actually had groceries delivered. Um, I found an online grocery place. I placed my order, and I think it was only like five bucks to deliver it. And we got to our resort, and everything was already there and already put away. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. awesome! And I didn't have to do it. And I, you know, planned out the meals ahead of time, so I didn't probably spend a lot on you know, those impulse grocery store purchases. And uh, that was nice. Yeah. What about uh, staying with relatives? You gotta weigh those options, don't you? Because, <laughs> like you said, when we stayed with my in-laws, we would chase the babies around as my father-in-law went. Ah, ah, oh, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> some some relatives are more helpful than others, would you yeah. say? You have to identify which relatives are the fun relatives and which relatives are their practical relatives. Like my mom and dad are the get things done, clean up the house, uh, help you get the group food, dinner ready, and my in-laws are more of the fun, keep the kids entertained and and uh, do the cool stuff. So it, depending on your type of vacation, it's good to have, it's good to identify what kind of relatives you have in, ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Eileen, what would you say are the best locations for traveling as a family? And when you say best locations in terms of like stress free or like is cost going to be a factor? Sure. <laughs> Every, all of the above. Okay. So what's the best stress free type of, what's the best cheapest place? What's, you know, what are some of the best that you've experienced or that you've helped, um, helped your customers with? You know, like 
I always hate to, to recommend something because ultimately at the end of the day, cost is always going to be a variable for each family, right? Like it, it, it could be reasonable for me, but maybe not so reasonable for you. Um, so I, I would say, you know, Disney is probably even for cruise or uh, Disney World is the best actually, um, just because they, they meet so many of my checkbox, my, my needs, my family's needs, um, in terms of trying to fit everybody into two rooms and having interconnecting doors or guaranteeing me that my, my kids uh, and I could be in two separate rooms, but side by side with the interconnecting door. Um, if, I, if I need, my child has autism, so you know there are programs that would cater to his needs and I know he's safe. Um, there are walkie talkies on the on the cruise line that you know are connected to me or pages that are connected to me that you know they can contact me if, if that child needs me um, they've thought of every single detail so if I was flying in the, it's free transportation from um, the air lot, the airport to the resort um, I don't have to go pick up my baggage because that's going to meet me meet up in my room later on and I don't have to worry about it um, I can plan in advance you know what rides I want to go on <laughs> Um, so I would say Disney would be uh, a good option for families um, in terms of their first vacation together. Um, but you know, in terms of cost, I have it written down here. I mean, we we didn't go to a Disney trip every year. I mean, we had to save for it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's something that you know, my my husband and I were talking, and, and we'd say, you know what, we want to do it in two years or three years, and and we have a jar, our Disney jar, and we put our money in there and maybe we, we I think there was one year where we thought we won't be able to fly down there so we did drive <laughs> we yeah. drove with now four kids and um, I bought a book travel down the I-95 with with kids and we planned out that okay we didn't want to end up in Disney exhausted so we need two stops and we would stop um Oh, I can't remember now. Where Kentucky Fried Chicken? Maybe it's Kentucky. <laughs> um, you know, where his museum was, and and the kids got out and saw his first hotel that he had, and we ate there, and and then the other place was Georgia, and we made sure we stopped along the way, and so it it was a fun long road trip before our ta-da, we're in Disney trip. Um, yeah. So all this to say, I think with enough planning and enough budgeting, you know, all trips are possible. And also, you know, what your family's priorities are, like what are you guys all looking, kids and adults, what are you guys looking for in this vacation? And, and I'm sure there's something that could fit those those needs. Yeah, and that, I think that's really important. Like what are the kids looking for? I, I took the boys um, last year. Actually, I was just looking on Facebook, reminded me. Um, it was just a couple of days ago last year. Um, what's that? Was it Washington? Because I saw that memory. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I took the boys to Washington, D.C. They had seen on a YouTube video that one of their YouTube heroes had gone to Washington, D.C. to the Spy Museum. And so they start. this was when they were like about seven. And so they've been talking about it and talking about it, and talking about it. So my husband has to travel for work. So we were able to get um, the flights uh, through our points. And I was able to book a hotel on points. And so I'm like, OK, let's do it. <laughs> you know, um, I did not check. And I, I actually went Easter weekend thinking it wouldn't be so bad. What I didn't anticipate was that it was the start of the spring break for the schools in the area and it just didn't even occur to me so it ended up being really busy um but we had a great time but again it wasn't the weekend wasn't how i would have wanted to have seen washington we didn't spend as nearly as much time on the on the in the museums and and doing that stuff but i yeah, I really had to compromise with the kids and some of the things we did that i want to do some of the things we did that they wanted to do um the fun the funnest things that they they did was they had this little stick bot and if you guys know stick bots and they um, would take my camera I brought a couple of different cameras with me so they could each you know take pictures and they would position stick bot on different things and they would take pictures of them you know so here we are you know in the you know in the Washington Memorial is in our background but no they're focused on stick bot in the tree but anyways <laughs> It's all good. They had a great time and they'll remember it for a long time. 
All right. So I think that um, is there any last last minute things that you want to say or advise or anything uh, before I take us into um, our closing uh, closing statements? Well, I'll tell you that my favorite tip for my sister-in-law um, was on a on a road, any kind of trip, road trip, airplane trip. She would go to the dollar store or somewhere like that and buy small little prizes for the kids. And she would wrap them in paper and birthday paper, or whatever wrapping paper she had. And she set, would set a timer. And so it would be like, oh, 50 minutes until you get to open the next one. And so it helped, you know, make the time go faster. The kids were excited about what was going to happen. And then they had some time to, you know, actually be engaged in whatever it was that she had, uh, had packed for them. And we've done that and it, it worked beautifully. It was a wonderful, inexpensive tip for traveling in a car with kids. Oh, that's a great idea. I have two. Okay. I have one that works in the cruise and on any, actually it would work in a hotel or um, in your car or in your all-inclusive resort is, you know, those uh, hanging shoe racks mm -hmm. that have those slots, um, especially in the cruise, you always have sunscreen or your sunglasses or your caps or those, or your room keys that need to be somewhere and if you put it on like there's not a lot of space like not a lot of table space or counter space that you could put all this stuff and be organized especially if there's six of you uh -huh. so you could buy two of those shoe racks and it could be one for adults and one for kids and everybody gets two slots or whatever and you could put stuff in there and then as you leave the door you know oh there's my sunscreen or there's my sunglasses or my cap and and keep your guys uh, keep your family organized that way and the second thing, um, some families don't like it, but my family, we enjoy it, is everybody packs their own stuff. And uh, the kids have to pack um, their own things. And uh, I mean, we if we remember, we double check that they've packed enough underwears and stuff like that. But um, it actually gives them a sense of responsibility. It helps me. <laughs> So everybody has a list, you know, you know, eight shirts, eight shorts or whatever, or eight pairs of underwear. And it's just me checking at the end. It saves time. And then, you know, they get to wear what they want. And there's no uh, argument for me. And, uh, you know, and uh, if it says your, your toys have to fit in this bag only and you can't bring anything more than that, they get to bring the toys that they will enjoy playing for the week. Yeah. Yeah, we've done the same thing and it uh, it really helps. It uh, helps, yeah, helps them have a sense of, okay, I'm involved in this. Yeah. And um, it also helps us organize ourselves. But, but do check because we, we yeah. have found six <laughs> pairs of scissors on, on security before and uh, got in trouble. Nice, nice. All right. Well, thank you so much, Elaine and and Heather. This has been fun and this is it's been it's interesting hearing all your stories. Uh, about traveling and um, that's been really good. So before we sign off, I did want to let everyone know about our next webinar. Um, we we were going to do nutrition for picky eaters, but we ran into some um, scheduling uh, scheduling conflicts. So we have put that into June and we decided to do our May one um, kind of along the theme of National Multiple Birth Awareness Day, which is also in May, and you'll get extra bonus points if you can type in when that day is. I'll give you a hint. It's the birth, birth, birth date of the Beyond Quintuplet. Uh, no, yeah, Quintuplet. Yeah. I got that right. Anyways, I will leave that out there. If anyone knows what it is, just type it in. Um, anyways, we're going to do, so the, the theme, which I don't think we've actually announced yet, have we, Heather? No. Nope. No, nope. well, this little group here will know before we announce it. The theme is growing up multiples. Um, and so along the lines of that, we thought it'd be really great for the board to do an AMA or an Ask Me Anything and give our experiences and perspective as moms of multiples. Um, and so um, you can ask us anything. We, we've kind of, we'll come equipped with some stories and some things, but you can ask us anything from you know, breastfeeding and sleep training to wrangling teens, um, you know, and everything in between. It doesn't have to be about your family or multiples. Um, it can be about your chapter, something that's going on with your chapter. It can be about 
you know, what is what do we do as an NBC board? Um, it can be anything. Ask me anything. Um, so you can register for that. Registration is open at the nbcmay2018.eventbrite.ca. So we hope to see you then. And then in June, we will pick it up. Um, June 24th, Nutrition for Picky Eaters with Jenna Kelland, who is a certified holistic nutrition consultant and adult educator. And she also has a PhD, which I did not put on there, but she does. So um, that will be that will be awesome. And lastly, uh, please do not forget to click on the survey link at the top of your screen before uh, closing your browser. We would love to hear some feedback uh, from you and um, get your input. And I think that's it. And I, I don't see in the um, in the window if anyone wrote in uh, that anyone guessed the date. But one, um, person, one person guessed the date. One person guessed the date, but they guessed it in our window. That was that was Elaine. <laughs> in our speaker window. And she doesn't even have twins. So, I know. <laughs> so it is. It, Elaine, you want to tell us? It's May 28th. Yes, yeah, May 28th. We will be celebrating that. And it's also this year is the 40th anniversary of Multiverse Canada. So the whole growing up, the growing up with multiples is growing up as an organization and then also our own lives with our own families, our own multiples. And um, yeah, we've got a lot to celebrate. So, okay, so I think we're a minute over time, so I will end there. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Heather. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. All right, have a good night, everyone. All Take right. care. Bye. Good night.